Okay, let's keep going. So in the earlier video, we did some brainstorming. We decided which of these ideas were strong or weak. And then we used our position, which one we agreed with, to write a strong introduction with a very strong thesis statement on one side. This is on page 16 of the booklet. You don't have to agree with one side. You can partially agree. But it is easier to write 100% agree or 100% disagree. Now mine is 100% agree that yes, governments should try to save languages. Now, if you wanted to be 100% against, this is the thesis statement, the final statement or final sentence in the introduction. You might write, in this essay, it will be argued that languages at risk of dying out are not worth saving and that the government expenditure should, would be, I'm sorry, would be better spent on other areas such as education and health. But remember, this is only the final sentence. Now, if you're in the middle, you must show both sides. Let me come back to this one. Remember, I was 100% agree. The second one, 100% disagree. And now I'm going to write one in the middle. Can you see this if here? If is a very good um, technique to be in the middle. In this essay, it will be suggested or argued that governments should save some languages, but only if they contribute to, um, what shall we say? the national economy. So this is but only if. But you understand all of these sentences are the thesis statement at the end of the introduction. This one 100% agree. This one 100% disagree. And this one is partially agree or in the middle. So you have to make this decision very quickly. Where do you stand? And you have to make it very clear for your examiner. Now, um, this is also in your book on page nine. And you can match them on your book. So I don't want to show you the answers for too long here. This is on page 10, keeping your thesis statement consistent, the same all throughout your essay. So I want to argue that governments should save endangered languages because it's culturally important and it's a source of pride for the speakers. My main body one, now I'm doing my planning. Languages should be preserved, why? For culture, traditions and history. What's the second reason? Is languages should be preserved for national pride. So in the introduction, you say, 
the two reasons, culturally important and a source of pride. Body number one, culture. Body number two, pride. And then repeat this in the conclusion. I always make a joke with my students. Imagine the examiner is stupid. So you have to repeat everything over and over again. What does it mean? Maintaining the same position. You have to write it in the introduction. You have to make sure the body paragraphs say the same thing. And then again in the conclusion. Now, in your essay, in your book, sorry, on page uh, 16, you will see the essay topic for this week. Old buildings should be knocked down to make way for progress. Now, what did we do first in this writing lesson? We had to analyse the essay question. You ask, what is the topic? It's old buildings. What is the specific topic? Should they be knocked down? And then what do you have to do? You have to agree or disagree with the task. Then you have to brainstorm, make a table, make a list of reasons why old buildings should be knocked down and a list of reasons against. Remember I taught you, think from what would your parents say? What would your grandparents say? What would a teacher say? Your friends. Think from many different people's angles. Then what do you do? Decide which ones are strong and which ones are weak. And it's more likely to use the strong ideas in your essay. If you have good examples and explanations, of course, you put them in the body paragraphs. Then you have to decide whether you agree, disagree, or partially agree. And then you have to write your plan. Now, the model essay is on page 142. So I'd like you to turn there and read that essay. Now I, however, have a surprise essay topic. You are not going to write about old buildings. You can use the model on page 42, but you, class 7, you are not permitted to write about that topic. Are you ready to see your surprise topic? Here we go. Smartphones and other digital devices should not be allowed into the language classroom to enable better concentration on teacher instruction and task completion. And the instruction is the same. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this statement? Read it again. Remember how we analyse the essay question. What is the topic? The topic is digital devices. Question number two. What is the specific topic? The specific topic is, should they be allowed into the language classroom? And what is your instruction? The instruction is here, remember. You have to agree or disagree with the statement. Now, you should have your book with you. I'm going to do this for the introduction and one body. Look at the introduction. It says, as society becomes more advanced, modern and high-tech buildings are appearing in our cities and towns. 
The first sentence gives background information. Write the same. Listen. As society becomes more technologically advanced, smartphones, laptops and other digital devices are appearing in our language classrooms. Go to the second sentence on page 142. Clearly, this trend can be a sign of healthy urban development. Come back to this one. Clearly, this trend can be useful for language learning. However, and then we go to the introduction, or the thesis statement, I beg your pardon. However, this essay will argue that old buildings need to be protected. We could write, however, this essay will argue that sometimes smartphones and computers should not be allowed into the language classroom and give two reasons. So up to this point in the lesson, I have given you a model. Let me write it here for you. But I'm following the example on page 142. As society becomes more technologically advanced, um, smartphones and uh, personal computers are being allowed into the language classroom. Clearly, uh, this trend can, actually I'm going to change it a bit now, can create some disturbance and perhaps annoyance for the teacher and students. However, this essay will argue that uh, for the most part, digital devices should be used in classrooms to allow for vocabulary and grammar um, tips and exercises and to teach students digital literacy at the same time. This is a different topic but it follows the model on page 142. Here is the thesis statement. It's clear to the examiner that I, have a look at the essay topic again, I 100% disagree. This one says should not be allowed into the classroom, but I'm going to argue they should be allowed into the classroom. What's my first reason? Vocabulary and grammar tips. So my first main body must focus on this. In the language classroom, students need access to a large range of vocabulary and grammar in the target language. Having uh, internet connected devices helps students to find words and grammatical and improve grammatical accuracy quickly and conveniently. And then I have to give examples. So that starts my main body one. Okay, I'll stop there. And hopefully we have a great lesson about this and you have this video if you need to consult it.
Bye for now.